Poison ivy sucks. It's everywhere, it makes you itchy, and people kind of suck at identifying it. I do think people mostly know about the three leaf rule, so no one's exactly gonna go make a salad out of it, but it's still an annoying little green menace that needs to strike. So what if there were something that could identify and kill poison ivy without the intervention of any lame old humans? Well, it just so happens that that's exactly what this crazy contraption does. What a coincidence, right? Wild. The idea of this was to identify edible plants with a wearable, but I was making it with my wife in mind who is crazy allergic to poison ivy, so I figured I may as well add in a feature that made it automatically spray poison ivy on site. Look at that. This is working so well. This is so cool. I got some SpreeSense hardware via a Hexter contest submission, and in an effort to be an adequate human being and actually follow through with the submission, this little gizmo has committed me to my crazy idea. To actually identify what's what, I'm using the Sony Neural Network Console. It even has image recognition project samples. What could go wrong? Several hundred billion projects later, staring into the void of despair, screaming into the darkness, nothing I try gives me anything but the hottest of garbage results until finally. One just works. And not only works, but works so well I thought I screwed up again. The results were so good I thought maybe I had the same training and evaluation data sets or something, but nope, it's alright. You can even see in the evaluation it actually does determine the likelihood of what every image is, and is just picking the right thing every time. It is magically delicious, oh my god I'm so happy. This is the setup that works so well for me for anyone following along. To use the neural network you've made, just export as an NNB and copy the model.nnb file onto a micro SD card. Thankfully, I had one I could repurpose from a VR camera. Side note, it has to be formatted as FAT32. Between some coding issues and the microSD card formatting, there may have allegedly been some frustrations. Why? It's right here, and it's all fat now. Why won't you work? But then things started cooperating. Another note to spare others out there some frustration, unless your NNB file is super small, you'll likely hit memory errors. It's actually really easy to resolve if you know what you're doing, which, you know, I didn't. Just go to Tools, then Memory. It defaults to 768. If you increase it to 1024, all your woes disappear. I tried increasing it to 1536, which caused other issues, so it seems like 1024 is the winner. Anyway, this is the code. For anyone trying to tediously pause and copy the code, I'm posting this project to Hackster, including the code, so that ought to save you some time and sanity. While we're at it, here are the schematics. It's more than a little crazy looking, but there's a lot that needed plugged into that tiny little breadboard. But at the end of the day, we're just displaying what kind of plant is seen on the LCD screen, lighting up a green LED light if something edible is identified, a yellow LED if something might be edible but we need more info, like if it's an edible mushroom with poisonous lookalikes, or a red LED if it's something we just shouldn't eat. We also have a servo to turn on the spray when we see poison ivy. We'll go ahead and breeze past and skip over most of the headaches, like how the powerful servo I got just wants to spin in circles forever, so I had to use a wimpy one instead. This is actually working, and it's very convinced. Ooh, actually that's fantastic timing. It just decided that my phone was poison ivy, which, I mean, it's not trained to think it's anything else, so kind of makes sense. Uh, let's see what else it's got. Grass. The ceiling is grass. Whatever. This thing's working. I'm so happy. Oh my god. Alright. As my contraption decides to continue identifying the ceiling as an airplane, I'm going to go ahead and get a quick demo to prove that this works in case something terrible happens. There we go. Poison ivy. So it's identified the poison ivy as poison ivy. It's really hard to hold the camera in the right spot. And so the servo is moving so that the uh, spray will happen right now it's a house apparently <laughs> it's really hard to angle this there you go poison ivy yay good job it's got the oyster as an oyster that's good oh, now it thinks it's grass perfect but the things one might consider eating there you go oyster uh it'll show up yellow if it's a maybe and you need more info red if it's something you shouldn't eat green if it's something you can definitely eat and something like that dog i don't even put a light on it don't eat dogs kind of going a little crazy but it's doing oyster the most so i'm taking that as a win dog it's like it's either a dog or an oyster yep see all right <laughs> i guess that's good 
And with this thing actually cooperating, that means that I get to move on to the fun part. So this really isn't much of a build montage, but the electronics need to sit on something, and this little metal frame with cardboard underneath gets to be that something. See, this is the best part of this thing. Watch this. Oh, hey, look, it fits now. How about that? Let's just go ahead and plug in the power cable now. Okay. Perfect. Everything's looking really great. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so this servo has to hang around down the bottom, which is perfect. It's just kind of flopping out the side. And this is the ace up my sleeve for power. Kind of looks like a flask or something, but this is to charge cell phones back when, you know, they didn't have days worth of charge. And so still have one of these apparently, and it's gonna be the way I get to power this thing remotely. Really hoping it works. I haven't tested it yet because I think it's got like five seconds of battery life, but we'll see. Oh, that looks like it fits really nicely. Really, really good. Perfect. <laughs> I should probably make sure this battery works before taping it in place, but that sounds like forethought and I don't support it. So let's just go ahead and do a little of this. There we go, that looks real nice. Very pretty. All right, let's see, does this actually work? <clears throat> Please work. Oh, delicious. All right, that's all I needed to see there. Oh, that's so good. This might work! Now for one of the trickier parts that doesn't have anything to do with electronics. I need to make it so that this button is almost pushed at all times so that it only needs a little teeny bit of extra force from this thing because it's a wimpy, wimpy little contraption. So I need to make it so that when this thing rotates, it pushes it just that little bit extra so that it actually sprays poison ivy and works correctly. Oh boy. Now it just needs to be really, really secured. I love duct tape. The servo is cocooned in duct tape. Now that is some high quality engineering right there. Mm-hmm, yep. All right, last thing. I need to have this camera set up so it actually stays like that. And then I think it just all needs mounted to me and the glove. So let's get this situated, I guess. I cut a couple slits in some cardboard and secured it in place. Oh, that is majestic right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is one of those armbands used to hold the OG iPods a hundred years ago. It's gonna work great for being the middleman that can get the electronics secured to my arm. And with brute force and duct tape, this thing's ready to go as well. I do believe they're ready to party. One thing that's fairly standard to bring with you hiking is a backpack of some form or fashion. So guess what? Instead of just lugging around this enormous bottle of poison ivy killer, it's going in the backpack along with our sandwiches and ponchos. It's time to gear up. All right. <laughs> this is the greatest contraption of all time. That seems pretty good. What a convenient contraption this is. All right. All right, powering on. Let's see what this thing can do. All right, let's go ahead and spray some so that it can, there we go. Oh, nope, we need, oh boy. Oh, actually it is doing it. It's on purpose. Poison ivy, it's doing it. Look, can you zoom in on, oh dang. All right, it's seeing grass. That's pretty fair. All right, I want it to, yeah, let's get some poison ivy. Oh, it's doing it. Here, in the light. Oh my gosh, it's working so well. All right, I'm gonna point back at the uh, poison ivy. Okay, now it sees a house, so it's, you know, not completely hit, but all right, back to poison ivy. Look at that, that's so good. I am very pleasantly surprised at how well this thing's working. It's still on poison ivy. Oh my gosh, this is actually working crazy well. What the heck? All right, what's it see now? No, it still sees poison ivy. All right, what else we got? Can you see this? 
dog. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's not all hit. <laughs> all right, back to the poison ivy. Poison ivy. Oh my gosh. All right, let's identify some other stuff. Let's see if it can actually identify a dog. Oh no, it's poison ivy. <laughs> let's not spray the dog. <laughs> all right, all right. Comb your tits thing. Let's not spray doggies. All right, dog. It really thinks the dog's an oyster. This is, I, I'm actually happy with that because it is really confused between the oysters and the dogs, which, you know, you're working with 28 pixels, so you get what you pay for, I guess. Dog. Yeah. See, <laughs> it's getting it. Point at the dog, get the dog. Heck yeah. It's kind of working. Grass. Oh, back to airplane. Well, so this can be really helpful because I didn't realize there was an airplane here and now I know. So that's a good learning curve right there. So one thing I'm really happy about is it's not saying anything out here is poison ivy, right? So let's go back to the poison ivy and see what it does. Yes. See, look at that. So it knows poison ivy actually really well. Okay, it's saw grass, that's fair. Still on grass. There's some poison ivy here. Look, poison ivy. Look at that. This is working so well. This is so cool. When I started this project, I had no idea how to use FreeSense or the neural networking tools, but now, well, it works. <laughs>